starting with the preset, I'm going to turn off resonator B, disable coupling, and move the slider all the way to the left so we can look at the different resonator types. Now, to start with, we have a string, and that's a perfectly elastic string. And we can switch through the different resonators either with this drop down menu or simply by clicking on there. Now, the next is a beam, which is a rectangular beam with a constant cross section. And we have these different dots to control the complexity of the sound. Now, the next one up is a marimba, which is also a beam, but it's got a variable section so we can get different partials. Next up is a drum head, and here we have a circular membrane. So that controls the complexity of the sound. And after that, we have a membrane, and this is a rectangular shaped membrane. Next up, we have a plate, which is also rectangular, but a different material. Next, we have a closed tube, which is a cylindrical tube with one end that's closed. So it allows you to obtain odd harmonics. And after that, we have an open tube, which is cylindrical and both ends are open. So we can contain the complete harmonic series, even and odd harmonics. And then finally, we have manual mode where you can create your own custom resonator by adjusting the partials on their own. So let's start with string and we'll look at the different settings that we have here. Now we can control the pitch of it. And this is in semitones here and fine increments on the right of the dot. And simply double click to revert to any of the default parameters. Now we have a key tracking knob over here and at zero, the pitch is the same on every note. So if I bring this all the way down, we're gonna hear that part and it'll all be on the same pitches. And as I move it up, one, again, I can double click to get to the default value. One is the distance of a semitone between each semitone on the keyboard. So it's tempered tuning that we're used to. But I can play with values below or above one to get different tunings. And again, I'll simply double click to reset it. Now we can also track the pitch with an LFO. We can modulate it based on this section over here. So let me turn on the LFO over here and we dial up the amount here to determine how much we want the LFO to influence the pitch. an interesting way of modulating pitch. I'll dial it all the way down and I'll turn that off for the moment. We can also affect pitch via the pitch envelope. Now the rate controls the amount of time before the note reaches its pitch. So I'm going to dial up some rate to demonstrate this. And the amount control can be either positive or negative, allowing the note to start either above or below the pitch. So we'll start with some negative values. So it'll scoop from down up to the pitch based on this rate. So if I hit one note, you'll hear it scoop from low to the default position. I'll slow down the rate. And when we're in positive values, it'll start higher and go down. So subtle amounts can add nice character to a sound. And the velocity knob allows it to be modulated by MIDI velocity, meaning the harder you play. So again, I'm gonna double click these to return them all to their default values for the moment. Now we have a release parameter over here, and this is used to simulate the effect of the dampers on an object when a note is released. And it's calculated as a percentage of the decay time. So these two work together. <laughs> Now we 
have the material knob, which adjusts the decay time of the individual partials. Now I'm gonna double click it to set it to zero. And at that value, all partials decay at the same rate based on the decay value over here. But as we dial negative, it'll favor lower frequencies and positive values will favor higher frequencies. We have a radius parameter that replaces this material control when we're using a tube object. And let's go to one of the tubes and you'll see that it'll become radius. And we can think of it as a kind of low pass filter where the cutoff frequency increases as this decreases. So in other words, the smaller the radius, the brighter the sound. And it also affects the overall decay time of the object. Now back to the string resonator type, we also have low cut and tone, which affect the filtering of the frequencies. And we have hit position, which is interesting. It controls the excitation signal that's applied to the resonator. And we see here that it's being struck by a mallet. So we can control where on the resonator type, it's being struck and it affects the overall amplitude of the different partials. So therefore it has a lot of effect on the sound. And finally, we have the balance slider, which blends the two resonators together. Let me put this one up, I'll double click to zero and let's just focus on this one for a moment. And again, we're in uncoupled mode. Turn it on. So we can blend the two. And in coupled mode, of course, they'll react together with the energy going back and forth and give a much more complex type of sound. So that's the resonator module.